All right, let's talk about musculoskeletal system. So the musculoskeletal system obviously has multiple parts. Um, the key players are going to be our bones and our bones, of course, help us to stand up tall and help us to move. Think of them like your framework. Um, you know, that helped to literally, that I'm only sitting up in this chair right now because of my bones. Um, bones also have a very important role in making your blood cells and storing your minerals. They are also usefully useful to protect important organs like this beautiful cranium is protecting this brain that's able to talk to you right now. Um, and my spinal cord um, is protected around bones. My uh, vital organs in my chest, um, like my heart, um, you know, are protected from my ribs and my rib cage and, uh, you know, my sternum. So um, they're very protective of the rest of the body. Um, there's also the joints and the joints are the place where bones come together and create movement. So, you know, bone are great and they're very protective, but they're also very stiff. So I need joints um, to help create motion and create movement so I can actually go places like come bother you guys about all this stuff. <laughs> and then there's also cartilage and cartilage helps support and absorb shock when I'm moving. So like, especially in like some of the big joints, like my knees and stuff like that, there's um, cartilage there and that helps to, um, as I'm trying to move and drive you guys nuts with all this stuff, it helps to support these movements and absorb some of the, you know, shock that happens, um, you know, as I'm trying to uh, come and bother y'all. <laughs> And when I say shock, I guess more what I mean is, is I'm talking about the, um, the pressure of the rest of my body. Um, so like, you know, it's obviously there's a, you know, there, we all have weight, you know, no matter what our size is. And so it helps to kind of absorb some of the shocks. So there's not so much pressure on those joints. Um, there's also muscle and muscle obviously helps us to move again, stand up straight, have this great smile I have here with my dimples. And so it's all my muscles. Um, and so it also, of course, makes up your most important organ, the heart. Um, and so muscles are so key to, um, you know, do all the other things, you know, and they wrap around your bones to help support you in that way. There's also smaller but very important players like your tendons and ligaments, and these help connect the muscle to the bone or the bone to bone. So in other words, these help the bone and the muscle to hug together and work as a unit. Um, and which is why when you tear them, which I don't recommend, by the way, um, it's definitely very painful and not fun. <laughs> and so uh, it makes things not work the way they're supposed to. Um, there's also the fascia, which gives strength to the muscle tissue and allows them to kind of glide against each other seamlessly. And then um, the bursa, but which are pretty much sacks of fluid. And keep in mind that we get, we have a lot of sacks of fluid in our body that we don't even realize we have. And again, that's kind of that shock absorber. It helps to relieve kind of pressure and decrease the friction. Um, so things aren't rubbing together. So what kind of assessment do I need to do on a musculoskeletal patient? Well, first I need to start by asking them questions. I wanna ask them, do you have any pain? So I'm gonna use the PQRST, you know, the method where I'm asking them about like, you know, where is it, what, when did it start? What makes it better or worse? Um, you, know, uh, you know, is it different than uh, what it was before? You know, when does it happen? All those kind of questions. Um, and we especially wanna focus on where it is and what makes it better or worse. I'm gonna ask them about their joints. Do they feel stiff? Are they hard to move in all directions? Um, what daily activities are they having trouble performing because of their pain or discomfort, whatever they're experiencing? Um, what do they do for a living? A lot of times um, occupations can tell you a lot about what kind of um, you know, pain or problems you're gonna have. You're gonna see me move around a lot because I have a job where I sit at a desk a lot and do these videos. <laughs> and so um, you know, my back obviously has a lot more problems because of my profession. Um, because of sitting down or even when I do my sit to stand desk, just being in the same position for periods of time. Um, do you exercise, you know, how's their um, active life? Um, do you change positions frequently at night? So you haven't any, any restlessness and then any previous in injuries or accidents because those can put them at risk for other bigger problems. So we always start with inspection. We wanna inspect the skin, inspect the patient's posture, their body build, their muscle size and symmetry. What are they working with? Um, we also wanna look at the contour of the joints. Um, are they a normal contours? Is there anything abnormal? any swelling or deformity, and we want to compare it side by side. Because um, some patients, they might have something that's a little abnormal, but if it's bilateral, it might just be something that they were born with. We also palpate the joints, which might seem strange, um, the muscles in the joints. Um, we always want to start by making sure our hands are warm, because if they're cold, um, they can cause a spasm, which may seem like there's something abnormal, but your muscles and um, joints are just reacting, or muscles, I should say, are just reacting to the cold temperature. 
um, but we want to start with the muscles and joints that are causing discomfort. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be feeling for contour, any sort of abnormal prominences, some tenderness and swelling, kind of think like palpating the abdomen. We're trying to see what's going on. Is there anything abnormal there? Um, we also want to look for swelling and we also look for what's called crepitation, which is a grating or crunching sensation. And it's usually heard, especially when the joint is moving. Um, but uh, yeah, it's this very grating sound and most people know it. It, uh, it sounds like you need to, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, put some, uh, 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 what is it called? W40, or I feel like I said that wrong. Um, we caught in the uh, we caught um, in their joint because you know it's, it's kind of squeaky and has this kind of grating or crunchy sound. It's literally a bone on bone sound. So uh, there's also a motion assessment and that's where we check for active and passive range of motion. So of course we wanna see what can they do with it? Does it hurt when they move? And um, we're gonna have them um, move in all directions and see which direction moves them because that's gonna tell us a lot about what the problem is. And so I have some pictures on this next slide. Um, so you can see here, you know, we have them, uh, you know, kind of do an extension or a flexion and adduction or abduction. So add is you're adding. So you're getting closer to your body and ab is out. Um, and then we might have them do inversion, eversion, or um, uh, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. And it's not that we necessarily need to have them all do all of these things. We want to ha um, have them do it with whatever joint is bothering them and really kind of see where they're at with their motion. Um, can't, do they have limited range of motion? Do they have pain with range of, range of motion? You know, what's going on there? We also rate their muscle strength. We need to assess their muscle strength and also strength against resistance. And what do I mean by that? So I mean, um, you know, like when, when I have, um, I'm want to check test muscle strength on someone's hand. You know, I'm going to um, give them my uh, what you call it, um, I'm going to give them my two fingers and tell them to squeeze as hard as they can. So that's testing strength. Like how hard can they squeeze? But I'm also going to tell them to push up, you know, against my hands as hard as they can, and then I'm going to have them put their hands back here and pull back as hard as they can because I want to create resistance there. And so this same thing we do with the feet where we put our hands on their feet and tell them push down like you're pushing on a gas pedal and then pull up like pull their toes towards their body to um, for that resistance and so we rate this on a zero to five scale and zero means they're not doing anything they have no strength they can't move at all and five is that full active motion uh, motion that even when i'm putting resistance there and saying push on this that they can push against the resistance that i'm creating we may measure circumference, um, especially if we're worried about um, some sort of injury, just to make see if it's getting better or worse. Um, we want to usually compare that side by side. Uh, we may also assess their gait. That's really important to kind of see how it's affecting their day to day functioning and their ability to walk. Um, we may do it with or without devices. And is there any signs that they're, um, you know, having trouble ambulating and moving? You know, people that are kind of like sitting there, kind of grabbing for things, they can't move, or they're, you know, see their pain gets a lot worse when they're getting up and moving. It's really important to note those things. Um, we always want to see um, what makes it better and what makes it worse. So what is normal or expected? So pretty much a person should have a normal spinal curvature. They should have no muscle atrophy, which means kind of like the shrinking um, uh, and no asymmetry of their muscles, like their muscles should be equal bilaterally. Most people don't go and just work out their right arm at the gym. So if, you know, if one arm is bigger than the other one, there's usually a problem there. Um, no joint swelling, deformity, or crepitation, that kind of grating sound, uh, and no tenderness with palpation of the spine joints and muscles. They should have full range of motion, and they should have five out of five muscle strength. So some abnormalities you might see is what we call contractures. And that's where patients that have been stuck in the same position for too long, we see this a lot with nursing home patients um, that haven't been turned well enough, or maybe ha they have a, people haven't been doing range of motion for them and they've been stuck in bed. They're like that person in this top picture, this is literally them, they're stuck in that position and you're gonna be hard pressed to be able to get them out of that position. Um, their um, muscles are contracted completely in that position. You're gonna have to work real hard to um, you know, get them to open and when you do, they're probably going to flex right back to where they are. Um, there's also kyphosis, um, we caught, which is, uh, you know, usually caused by uh, arthritis. It's usually a later sign of arthritis, uh, but it can also be from po uh, poor posture or osteoporosis. Uh, and then there's lordosis, which you see a lot of times um, in pregnancy, but also with obesity. Um, and, um, you know, it's the opposite spinal curvature. And then we have scoliosis, which, you know, um, some people can have, especially get diagnosed when they're younger, which is, um, you know, uh, more of the, it's like an asymmetrical, and you'll see a different elevation in the shoulders, and just the way that their back is shaped as a whole. 
Other abnormalities you might notice on, your, on their hands, and we're gonna talk about a lot of these in class, but effectively they can have what's called a swan neck deformity. In other words, their fingers can literally look like a swan's neck. This is really common in rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and there's also what's called ulnar de deviation, which is all the fingers drift kind of to the ulnar side of the arm. You can kind of see it here, how everything's kind of pointing in this direction. And then you see that swan's neck here. Um, and these are both common in rheumatoid arthritis. We'll talk about how in osteoarthritis, they can also have nodules um, in their hands as well. And that's another deformity that they can have. Um, but that's a lot of how we differentiate rheumatoid arthritis from osteoarthritis in some of these deformities that they show up with. So for imaging, we want to get um, X-ray and CT or MRI, because we want to see what's going on in that bone, or if it's not a bone problem, what's going on in that muscle. Um, we may do bone density testing, especially for osteoporosis, um, because that's going to let us know, um, you know, how uh, we cut them, um, how much, uh, like, really not, I don't want to say how spongy their bones are, but um, how supportive their bones are, you know, are they starting to lose that bone mass, and especially if a patient's coming in having a lot of fractures, you know, we want to kind of test to see what's going on with their bones. Um, we also might do arthroscope, uh, arthroscopy, which is pretty much where we go in and we visualize the joints. Um, they usually do this in conjunction with procedures. We usually don't just go in and explore the joints, but if there's a big problem, we might. We can do um, labs. And what we're looking for is we're really looking for, um, is there signs of muscle breakdown? And if someone's creatinine kinase or CK is elevated, that's a sign that I'm having tissue breakdown or muscle breakdown. I also want to check the potassium because um, a lot of times those are connected together, it's kind of like the creatinine kinase, potassium and kidney function, they all kind of um, go together. And when you have a muscle injury, all of them are usually uh, weight caught on. They're having a lot of issues and can be elevated. Uh, markers of inflammation. Um, so we do these a lot, especially in autoimmune diseases like uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We're going to look for um, CRP and ESR, which is C-reactive protein or erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And both of these are going to tell you that there's some sort of inflammation going on with the patient. Uh, and then there's also specific disease processes for um, uh, specific labs for different disease processes. So like when we look at um, rheumatoid arthritis, we're going to check a rheumatoid factor, an anti-CCP, and an ANA. And all those are going to tell me, hey, I have an autoimmune disorder going on. Um, for gout, we're going to check a uric acid. And so we'll get more into those specific labs as we go into those disease processes. They might also do invasive procedures. Um, we can do an arthrocentesis, which is where we remove um, synovial fluid. And we do this a lot of times. It's one of the ways we differentiate um, the types of arthritis, osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, is we're pretty much seeing what color is the fluid that's coming out of there. And it lets us know, is there an inflammatory process or is this not a, um, is this not a um, you know, inflammatory process? Is this just a bone problem like a regular osteoarthritis? Um, and we might also check on muscle activity by doing an EMG. So kind of think of it like an EKG, but for the muscles, it's telling us, are there electrical signals being sent? So this is probably, you didn't realize there is, um, you know, so complex many things uh, that you can do with um, joints and muscles, um, but there's a lot of disorders. And especially as people start to age, um, it's really good to be able to see what's going on. And, you know, a lot of times you go into a patient's room and they may say, oh yeah, no, I'm not, I don't have any pain, but then you start moving their joints and it really hurts. So it's good to pay close attention and see not only just what can they physically do, um, you know, but what's bothering them and what's causing them pain. And that's going to help narrow down and also help manage their day-to-day -day a lot better because these musculoskeletal illnesses, um, and these, especially the chronic ones, can lead to a lot of discomfort and, um, you know, inability for someone to take care of themselves on a day-to-day -day basis. So if we can start as the nurse and kind of get in there and find some of these things that are bothering them, then we can lead to a better quality of life for our patients. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.